You're cursed, so you better get out of this house soon. A few days ago, my mother-in-law, Vicky, treated me like I was the one who was cursed and kicked me out of her house. I'm Hannah, and I'm 33 years old. Ever since I left school, I've been working as a nurse at a hospital in the city. I'm now an expert at my job, and I'm relied by many people at work. My husband's name is Mike. We met when I was working at the hospital where he was brought in after an accident. We hit it off right away, partly because we were close in age. He kept in touch with me after he got discharged from the hospital, and we began to date. I became more and more attracted to the cheerful and kind Mike. I want you to take care of me from now on. Mike smiles mischievously as he says that. Oh, what are you saying? Please marry me. Yes. After six months of dating, he proposed to me. I wanted to be with him forever, so of course I accepted his proposal. One day, a few days after his proposal, Mike called me out to consult with me. What's wrong? You look so serious. Actually, I didn't tell you this, but I resigned from where I worked the other day. Huh? Why? I'm going to be taking over my father's company anyways in the future. If that happens, then I wouldn't be able to do whatever I want. I thought I'd enjoy it while I can and do a part-time job instead. Why didn't you tell me about such an important thing before you quit your job? I'm sorry, but I don't think it was that big of a deal. When the time comes, my father will probably ask me to take over the company. So until then, I'm going to take it easy. When the time is right... Are you sure that you can run a company that easily? I'll be able to manage it somehow. I'll have a lot of experts who knows my father working for me. Aren't you just sleeping on the fact that you'll be able to manage when you won't be able to? I thought that Mike had an immature way of thinking about how the society works. He proposed to me only a few days ago and I was just stunned. I may depend on you for a while, but we'll do our best together. And I mean, you have a higher income than me to begin with. Huh? I mean, it's definitely fine to work because I love my job, but... In return, Mike, you have to definitely think about your future, okay? Okay, okay, don't worry about it. He seemed to go to work every day, but I never thought that he would quit his job. But it's not like I'm getting married for his money either. Even so, I thought he had the sense to work at least as a normal adult, so I developed a feeling of distrust towards him. But I knew that we had a long life ahead of us, and there would be many more things to come, so I decided to trust him this time. Finally, the day came when we went to greet Mike's parents. I was nervous and excited because I had not been able to go and greet them before due to our schedules. Hey, what are your parents like? Well, my father is pretty busy and independent, but he grew the company all on his own, and well, I think he's a great guy. My mom loves me a lot, so I think you and her will get along well. What does he even mean by that? Oh, I see. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Mike's house is a big house since his father runs a company. Wow, your family is really rich, Mike. A house with a warehouse, that's amazing. Oh my, Mikey, welcome back. Nice to meet you, Vicky. My name is Hannah. Oh, Mikey, you should come back more often to show your face. Uh, did she just ignore me? I'm home, Mom. This is my wife-to-be, Hannah. Ah, yes, okay, well, enjoy your stay here. It seemed like I wasn't welcome at all. Mike's father was away for work, so it was just Mike, Vicky, and I. It was somewhat awkward being with them. I could tell right away that Vicky really loved her son, but somehow they were talking with each other as if I wasn't there. When Mike left as expected, Vicky says this to me. I'm going to ask you directly. Did you choose Mike for his money? Uh, excuse me? You know, you can fool Mike, but not me. Uh, that's not... 
don't you dare think about doing anything to my son or my family, okay? On the way home, Mike suggested that we should live together with his family. You and mom seem to get along well with each other, and wouldn't it be more convenient for us to live together with them after our marriage? Besides, my father and mother don't actually get along very well, and I think it would be reassuring to have you with us. In return, when we have enough money saved up, we will definitely buy a new house and live together. I wanted to fulfill Mike's wishes if I could, but considering the earlier exchange I had with Vicky, it was something I just didn't want to do. But after all, we are the ones getting married, so why don't the two of us just live on our own away from your parents first? We'll think about whether or not we'll live together in the future at that time. Fine, you're a cold person, huh, Hannah? A few days later, Vicky called me up and asked me to reconsider about living together. All right, Hannah. Our family has a long history. In order to accept you, a stranger from nowhere as my son's wife, I need you to prove to me and show me that you're not marrying my son just for money by moving in with us. It's not like I didn't want to cut ties with Mike's parents, and I wanted to be amicable as possible. I felt a little positive that if I made an effort, I would try my best and that Vicky would approve me of being Mike's wife. If that didn't work, Mike and I would live away from them, is what I thought. Not long after that, we got married. My family and friends gave me their blessings at the wedding. But that was the beginning of our hellish life together at Mike's parents' house. I had no intention of quitting my job at all. But I was checked by Vicky one by one about cleaning the house early in the morning, doing laundry even on my days off, and preparing meals. Oh, you can't even cook very well? What a troublesome wife you are. You could have at least bought some side dishes. Huh, I think it's delicious. Is she bullying me? On the days after the night shift, my body was so tired from work that I would pass out by evening. But Mike, whether he knew how I was feeling or not, was living a carefree life on his own. Hey, Mike. About Vicky. Ugh, again? Just make it work with my mom. I have to go to my part-time job now. Hey! One day a year later. At a family gathering, Vicky asks me, Hannah, when are you going to show me my grandchild? Please don't tell me that you're infertile. If you are, you should go to a clinic for a treatment right away. I was getting concerned about it myself even without Vicky's advice. In fact, I had been going to the clinic for a while to consult about infertility treatment. The treatment would cost a lot of money, and I couldn't quit my job, so I had been worrying about it for a long time. I could only reply, I'm thinking about it properly, to her. We had only been married for a year, and yet Vicky tells me this. You're incapable of having children, aren't you? If you are incapable, then it's pointless for you to be even here as Mike's wife. I was shocked by Vicky's heartless words. On top of that, some of my relatives also said that they were worried that I wouldn't be able to produce an heir. When I looked at Mike, he turned his face away and ignored me. I had no one on my side. I'm doing my best. I've been to the clinic and had tests done. Well, this is the first time I'm hearing about this. Then you must be able to get pregnant with healthy children, right? If you can't produce an heir, you are completely unnecessary here. If that happens, I will ask you to divorce my Mikey. With those words, something inside me snapped. I've had enough. I'm not a slave that you can just disown me just because I can't get pregnant. Besides, I married Mike, not his whole family. Oh dear, you've really said some things that you can't take back now. You really are not qualified to be a wife after all. It can't be helped if you're only after our money though. Well, I've had it enough too. A woman like you who can't have children better get the hell out of my house. Hearing her words, I packed my bags and left immediately. 
I went back to my parents' house and told them what had happened. Mike called me as soon as he came home from work. Please, come back. If you're not here, I'll be troubled. Troubled by what? Are you saying that knowing what I went through? But I don't want a divorce from you. Then why don't you leave your parents' house and come live together with me? But my mom... Are you going to leave your parents' place or not? Which is it? Uh, let me think about it for a little bit. Huh? In the end, Mike couldn't argue back to Vicky and ended up divorcing me. We had a little trouble during the divorce process. Vicky, who knew that I have my savings, told Mike to divide the property properly between us. But I was totally against it. A meeting was set up to discuss about the issue, but thanks to my parents and the lawyer I had asked for, also complained to Mike about it. So he caved in, and the divorce was successfully finalized with no property division. To this, Vicky was saying, My son said enough is enough, so that's why he was kind enough to cave in and you should be thankful for that. Finally, everything was over. I couldn't see a future with such a crazy person like Vicky. And Mike, who seemed to be forever stuck at his part-time job. I was glad that this was over. I also became to think that I should start my life over again with a refreshed mindset. I was now alone and I had moved out and resumed work with a refreshed mind. And few years later, one day, when I had almost forgotten about the past, Vicky suddenly came to my house. Long time no see, what happened? You were only trying to be innocent when you weren't at all. Our family heirloom is missing ever since you left. Give it back, you thief. I had no idea what she was talking about, but I was not happy to have her making a scene at my front door, so I reluctantly asked her to come inside the house. Vicky was being very aggressive. Our family heirloom, which was placed next to the warehouse, is missing. It was you who took it, right? Not only did she accuse me that I was unable to have children, but she would also accuse me as being a thief. I'm just so stunned. Huh? What do you mean? I have no clue what you're talking about. Fine, I'll give you some time, a few days, to return it back. If you return it in time, then it'll be fine. If you don't, I'll sue you. Vicky finally left after saying that. I had no idea what was going on and all I was left with was a feeling of discomfort. There certainly seemed to be a lot of important things in that huge house, but I had no interest in them at all, so I didn't even take a closer look. Of course, I had no idea how much they were worth for and there was no way I was going to take it. And she just suddenly treats me like a thief. After that, Mike called me in a panic. I'm so sorry, Hannah. I think my mother visited you, but it was a mistake about the family heirloom being stolen. I'm really sorry about this. He told me this over the phone and hang up. Exhausted by this turn of events, I lied on the sofa. A few hours later, the doorbell rang, and both Vicky and Mike came in together. I know you're in there, come on out. Come out, you cursed one. Give me back what you stole from me. I came all the way here to get it for you. Mom, just please calm down. Vicky is just screaming around for me to return their family heirloom, and Mike is desperately trying to stop her. Um, it's not good for the neighbors to hear you screaming in a place like this, so come inside, please. If you just return what you stole from me, then everything would have been fine. Mom, as I've been saying, there must be some mistake here. Why are you protecting this woman, Mike? What do you mean, why? The, that's... And then it hit me. Mike, could it be you who took the family heirloom? Huh? In the past, when you run out of money, you used to secretly take my accessories out and sell them. W well, that's... Oh no, Mikey... Did you? Knowing that he couldn't deny the truth now, Mike began to confess. I don't get enough money from my part-time job, 
And mom, you don't give me any allowance these days. My father also told me not to come to work and I can't pay back my debts because he won't retire anytime soon. Mikey, you're in debt? Apparently, he didn't have enough allowance so he even began to be in debt. Wow, he really is helpless. So, since it's not my fault at all, can you both please leave? No! The reason Mikey did this is surely because of your influence. He might have borrowed money because you told him to. I can't believe Mikey married a hopeless woman like you. That's right, I'll demand alimony for all the troubles you've caused me. Right, Mikey? Um, you're the one who caused me troubles to begin with. Why is Mike's debt my fault? Isn't it because of the way you brought him up like that he became who he is? Don't you think so? I mean, normally, adults don't act like that. I didn't even want to see you both, but you were the ones who suddenly barged into my house, so who's the crazy ones here? When I was getting tired of this, my husband, who was in the back of the house, came over to me. He said, what's wrong, as he appeared with our baby in his arms. Yes, I had actually remarried. The moment they saw the faces of my new husband, Dave, and our baby, both Vicky and Mike looked very surprised. Of course they were, because my current husband was the lawyer who I had hired from that divorce. Later, I met him coincidentally through a friend who was that lawyer who helped me at that time. Dave, who knew the personalities of my former in-laws and Mike, was worried about me and had helped me in many ways. When I talked to him, we had the same interests and above all, he was a really reliable man. Six months later, we got married. Oh, hi, it's been a while. Both Mike and Vicky were stunned by Dave holding a baby. A baby? No way. Why did you barge in here without any permission? I heard a little about this before, but are you still living without any proper income from a company? It's none of your business. If it's none of my business, then get out. Hannah is my precious wife. Ugh. As Mike got silenced by Dave, Vicky says this. What's wrong with him being unemployed? Mom! Stop treating me like I'm unemployed. My husband sighs loudly, and this makes our daughter cry. You do know that I'm a lawyer, right? If you make any more ludicrous accusations, I will proceed this to the court to take legal action. Let's start with breaking and entering. I only just walked in here for a minute. Then Dave says this. You may think it's easy to say that you just only enter someone's house for a few minutes, but the crime of breaking and entering comes with penalties like imprisonment. The penalty for breaking and entering is up to three years in prison and a fine of up to $1,000. There is also a jail sentence available, so you better be prepared. Pardon me? Hearing those words, both Vicky and Dave rushed out of the house. Seeing them rush out, I said this to them. Oh yes, as you can see, about the infertility thing, the clinic checked everything and found that there was nothing wrong with me. After being told that there was nothing wrong with me, the two of them left quietly. Dave laughed as I said this to them. If you ever come back again, I will be calling the police. Later on, when Dave sent a notice to Vicky's house, my ex-father-in-law called me right away to apologize. I'm so glad I married a very reliable husband. I heard from a mutual friend that Mike is still living with his family. Our family of three is living happily together now. Oh yes, I also found out recently that I am pregnant with our second child. Dave hugged me gently and we are so happy. I am very grateful for my kind husband. I'm so sure that the future of our children is very bright.